What a great message we heard last Sunday in both services. Amen? Thanks to Pastor Chris Sirahan for sharing the word. And we've been talking about taking a hold of the promises of God and moving into what God has for us. And Pastor Chris talked a bit or spoke about who we are in Christ Jesus. Amen? Who we are in Christ Jesus, that we are in Christ. And we have to have that revelation of who we are if we're ever going to fulfill the purpose and plan that God has for our life. Uh, Who believes God's got a great plan for their life? He's got a great plan for our life, but he's also got a great plan for their life out there as well. Amen? Come on. He's got a plan and a purpose for each and every one of our life. They're just not walking in that at this point. But I believe there's a, a... what we're going to be talking about today, and we've got a little bit to get through, but I believe this is so important. If we want to fulfill what God has for us, there's another thing that we need to do, and that is to speak the Word of God. Come on. And I'm going to be reading the first passage of Scripture. I've got a few to go through. Is in Matthew 8, 5 is where we're going to open up this morning, and that's it up there already. Good on you, Charmaine. She's on the ball today. Thank you. It's this, when Jesus had entered Capernaum, a centurion came to him, asking for help. Lord, he said, my servant lies at home paralyzed and in terrible suffering. Jesus said to him, I will go and heal him. The centurion replied, Lord, I do not deserve you to have, to have you come under my roof, but just say the word and my servant will be healed. I love that. I think that's one of the most powerful scriptures in the Bible. Here's a centurion. He's a Roman. He's not even a Jew. But he'd seen the hand of Jesus in action and seen God moved. And then Jesus said to the centurion, Go, it will be done just as you have believed it would. And his servant was healed that very hour. Isn't that powerful? Isn't it amazing how Jesus can in an instant bring about a change in somebody's life? They would have been looking at this situation in hopelessness. But this man knew where he needed to go, and that was to Jesus. And Jesus spoke and said, I can come to your house and minister. He said, I'm not even worthy for you to come, but if you will just speak the word, I know it will happen. Come on. I want to say today, the title of my sermon today is Just Say the Word. Just speak the word. Just say the word and it will happen. Amen? Come on. I want to say today that the words we speak are powerful. Don't underestimate the power of your words to change your life and the life of people around about you. Come on. It's powerful today. Proverbs 18.21 says, Death and life are in the power of the tongue, and they that love it shall eat the fruit thereof. Now, it's not that we can look at that as negative But there's positive in that as well. It says, death and life are in the power of the tongue, and they that love it shall eat the fruit thereof. The fruit of the good things we speak and the fruit of the bad things we speak. Come on. Because it says here, there's life and death are contained in the words we speak. Romans 10.9 says, If we confess with your mouth Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For it's with your heart that you believe and are justified, but it's with your mouth that you confess and are saved. Hallelujah. Life is in the tongue. Amen. If you confess Jesus as your Lord and Savior, it says you shall be saved. You are taken out of the kingdom of darkness and put into the kingdom of light. You're no longer a sinner, but you've become a saint just by the words that you've spoken. There is power in the word of God. Matthew 12, 34 says, For out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. That's why he says you've got to believe in your heart. And once you believe that in your heart, it's got to be a heart change, not a head change. Come on. If you're just speaking at this out of a head knowledge, I want to say I doubt that that is the case. It needs to be a heart change. For out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. Come on. When when there's a change of heart, when God does something deep inside you, nothing can stop you from confessing it. 
Come on, it's true, isn't it? Come on, when you first got saved, remember that day when you had that first love, you had that encounter with Jesus where he came into your heart and into your life and you just felt that burden of sin just lift from you and you were a different person. Did you hold anything back or did you confess the name of Jesus? You want to tell everybody about Jesus and what he'd done in your life. Come on, it's true. We confess with our mouth. So as we confess Christ, we are saved. Luke 12, 8 goes on to say, I tell you the truth. Whosoever acknowledge me confesses me before men. The Son of Man will also acknowledge him before the angels of God. But he who disowns me before men will be disowned before angels of God. So if we confess, we will be saved. But on the other side of that, if we say we want nothing to do with Jesus, that's what we'll have. Come on. Life and death, there's power in what we say. These words that come out of our mouth, they don't just fall to the ground, but I believe it's like the word of God. It's living, it's active, it produces, it has an effect. So life and death are in the power of the tongue. The words we speak are so so powerful. They affect our lives And it determines whether we live under the blessing of God or under the burden of sin. Come on. So there's there's power in what we say and the words that we confess. Not just in the lives, our lives. You know what? When you speak positively, how much better do you feel? But you know what? Not only do you feel better, but everybody around you probably feels better. Ever notice that? Ever been around people that just speak negative all the time? It doesn't matter. They could win gold lotto. You know, the jackpot. Oh, hey, your number's lined up. Well, it was only 20 million. It could have been 40. Poor fella, you know. Don't know how you sort of do with it. Come on. We've been fed a lie. And that is that there's no power in our words, but there is. Who remembers that old saying you'd be at school and something happened somebody would say something to you hurtful you know they go ah oh, you know you're an idiot or you know you'll never achieve nothing you go home tell your parents and they'd say sticks and stones will break your bones but names will never hurt you anybody heard that old saying what a lie that is a powerful just just a total lie you know i i've fallen off motorbikes i've fallen off push bikes i've had a lot of I've had a few breaks, not, not many, but I've had a lot of bruises, and they healed. But a lot of those words that got spoken over me still affecting me for 50 years. Hello? The bruises heal, but the words don't. There's power in those words, and sometimes we get them power because they have an effect over our life and they can hinder us for years and years and years sometimes you can talk to somebody you're counseling somebody that could be 50 60 70 years of age and the issue goes right back to when somebody said something negative to them when they were 10 years of age because there is power in the words we speak blessings and cursings come out of our mouth we've got to be so careful how we speak James 3, 9 says, With the tongue we praise our Lord and Father, and with it we curse men who have been made in God's likeness. Out of the same mouth comes blessings and cursings. My brothers, this should not be. Can both fresh water and salt water come from the same spring? What's the answer? Uh, It's challenging, isn't it? It's saying here, we can come to church, we can lift our hands and praise God and we can speak glorious things about God and and about everything and we can be speaking up, but when we go outside, what do we say about ourselves and what do we say about others? Because those people we speak against are created in the image of God. Come on, we've got to be very careful with the things we say. Can both fresh water and salt water flow from the same spring? The answer is no. It's either one or the other. The only thing that should be flowing out of us is blessing. Because we are called to be a people who bless God, bless others. 
Just a note about this. Springs only start to bring forth salt water when fresh water ceases to come in. Hello? You know what? Where there's plenty of rain being poured out, those springs stay fresh. But when the freshness of the rain stops, then all of a sudden you start to see salt start to come out of that spring. It changes. What's coming out of your spring today? Hello? We used to have a place in Halls Creek called Palm Springs. It wasn't like Palm Springs in America, uh, but it was Palm Springs to us. And it was a water hole that had water all year round. It's about 40 kilometres out dirt road, and you go out there, and here was this beautiful oasis. It was just... And there's this rock that was there and a narrow pathway that would come into this really big, deep pool. And if you walked up to the rocks, here was a spring, this fresh as fresh water coming out in the desert, out of this rock and just flowing into this stream. And just, that was the only place you could catch fish. Not for too long, because once the fish were there and everybody went fishing, there was no more fish. But there was life and there was healing and everything came to that place and it was a place traditionally where Aboriginal people used to come and they would gather around that place because it was a place of life. Come on. Because the spring flowed and the fresh water kept coming out of that. See, the Bible says this, whosoever believes in me, as the scripture has said, streams of living water will flow from within him. That living water is life-giving water. That's the water that should flow from us. It brings life. It brings healing. It brings deliverance. It brings encouragement. It builds faith. Come on, that's what should be flowing out of us. That's the sort of river that needs to be flowing out of us. The fruits of the Spirit. Love, joy, peace, patience, gentle, kindness. Come on, all those things should be flowing from us. If the Holy Spirit's living in us and flowing through us, that should be what comes out of us, correct? Come on. Good things in, good things out. We said out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. What are you putting into your heart? What are you feeding on? Come on. What, what's coming into you that flows back out of you? Matthew twelve thirty three says this. Make a tree good. And its fruit will be good. Make a tree bad and its fruit will be bad. A tree is recognized by its fruit. Side point on that. Do you notice it doesn't say a tree is recognized by its roots? It doesn't matter where you come from. Hey? It's who you know. Hello? I'll say that again. A tree is not recognized by its root. A tree is recognized by its fruit. Because it says if you make a tree good, its fruit will be good. Or if you make the tree bad, its fruit will be bad. A tree is recognized by its fruit. Then it goes on to say the good man brings forth good things out of the good stored up in him. An evil man brings out evil out of the things stored up in him. But I tell you that men will have to give an account on the day of judgment for every careless word that's spoken. For by your words you will be acquitted and by your words you will be condemned. There is life and death in the power of the tongue. Come on. It's saying here that if we give our lives to Jesus, come on, and allow the good fruit in our lives to flow and the word of God to start to flow from us, we bring life and life to others. We must be careful with the words we speak. I've got written here, what we say today will be what we live tomorrow. What we confess today will be what we live out tomorrow. Think about it. The children of Israel with Moses sent out the spies into the promised land, checked it all out, came back, said, mate, this is a beautiful place. It looks like the Gold Coast, except there's more fruit there. This is the place you want to go. This is the place where we, we, we want to be. But out of the 12 spies, 10 came back and they confessed, we can't take that land. It's full of giants. 
What did they get? Exactly what they confessed. They never entered into the promised land. There was two that confessed, we can take the land for they are bread to us. They are nothing. We've got God on our side. And that was Joshua and Caleb. And who entered the promised land? It was Joshua and Caleb. The ones that confessed and said, we can take the land for God is with us. They knew who they were in God. Amen. Come on. And they spoke out in faith and they entered that promise. They received what they spoke today became their future. It was delayed by 40 years because of the negativity of the people around them. But they still fulfilled the call of God upon their life because they spoke it out in faith. James 3, 3. I like James. He's pretty practical, isn't he, James? He doesn't really. He's not a guy for mincing words at all. You know, he's just straight down the line. He says this, when we put bits into the mouths of horses to make them obey us, we can turn the whole animal. Isn't it amazing? Something so small in something. I mean, you ever been near a big race horse? I don't know much about horses. My sister loved riding the things. I was a bit terrified by them. Probably because the first time I rode one, it bolted on me. Somebody didn't put the saddle on tight and it started to lean over and the horse just took off and started heading towards this barbed wire fence. I was about 13. I let the reins go and just hung onto the saddle like I was on a ride at Dreamworld, just trying to survive. Thought I was going to die and uh, didn't realise that little thing that was in its mouth that was only that long was where the control was. That's what I, I, I let control go when I should have held onto the reins and steered it because that little bit, that little thing in the horse's mouth was going to determine the direction the horse went. Or take ships for an example. Although they are so large and driven by the strong winds, they are steered by a very small rudder wherever the pilot wants to go. Likewise, the tongue is a small part of the body, but it makes great, great boasts. You know what, we look at those massive ships that come into the port out here. You know what, and it's not till you see them front on, you go, man, that is wide, that's a big ship. And there's a lot of bigger ships than those around the world. But if you have a look at the size of that massive ship and you have a look at the rudder, the rudder is only so small compared to the rest of the ship. And yet the rudder determines the direction of that ship. When it pulls out of port and it gets out into the open sea, that rudder determines the destination of that ship. If the rudder is broken, the ship is useless. Isn't it amazing? For the rudder determines the outcome or where the ship ends up. And so it is with us. It says the tongue is like the rudder. It determines the destiny. It determines the destination. It has a great effect on where we go and how we travel through life and where we end up. There is power in the tongue. I want to say when a ship, when the rudder gets broken on the ship, if it one was to break out here, do you think they're going to leave it? Or do you think they'll fix the rudder? Hello? They don't just leave it out in the port and go, well, when we get around to it, it'll probably get better. Oh, we'll sort that out or, you know, it can just float out there for a while and just, it's going to go nowhere while the rudder is broken. Think about it. Some of us need to fix the rudder so it'll change the course of our life. Instead of speaking negatively, start speaking the word of God. Start speaking positively. It could turn your life right around. Come on. Sometimes it should make an adjustment to the rudder, a bit of a touch-up. But I want to say, if you just leave the rudder, you'll just keep going around and around and around if there's a problem with it. What we confess today will determine where we end up, whether we fulfill the purposes of God or we fail to do so. I believe we have the power through Christ to speak things into being because we serve a God like that. Aren't you glad of that? Genesis 1, 1, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Now the earth was formless, empty. Darkness was over the surface of the deep. And the Spirit of God was hovering over the waters. And God said, let there be light. And there was light. God spoke and it happened. There's power in the words of God. 
It is power when we speak God's word. There's creation. We were created in the image and likeness of God. Do you know that? That means that we are like God as we can speak forth and things can be brought into being. The God that sees those things that are not as though they were. Oh, aren't you glad he doesn't see you where you were? He doesn't even see you where you are right now. He sees Christ Jesus and he sees you as victorious in him. Come on. You're not defeated. You know what? We can, this, the world was formless, empty and dark. Nothing was happening on this planet. You would have looked at it in the natural back then and you wouldn't have wanted to have part of it. But you know what? God spoke into that situation and brought change. And I believe that that's what we are called to do this day and this age right now. This world is in darkness. It doesn't know what's going on. It's full of turmoil. People don't need to hear any more bad news stories. They need to hear some hope, some light, some, some hope for the future. Come on. That there's somebody out there that will change the situation of people's lives. What we speak today will be what we experience tomorrow and the days ahead. Have you ever met anybody like this? I had a mate in Cairns or a guy I knew when I wasn't a Christian and he was this one of these sorts of guys that every time you'd meet him, say, how's things going? Oh, mate, I'm a born loser. Guess what? He was. He confessed it that much. Everything went wrong in his life that could possibly go wrong. Probably driving unregistered cars didn't help him a lot and doing things like that, but that was what he... Did. He was doing things that were, he was driving a car down one day, that he, got, he got out of prison, he was driving a car, heading down the road, had no license, the car's unregistered, police come the other way, he got picked up. And he says, I'm a born loser. Probably a few bad decisions there as well, could be going on to that. And then he decides, I'll buy a motorbike with a full face helmet that's tarked, so when I'm riding, the police won't know it's me and I'll be safe. I see him a few days later, he had a bit of plaster and that on him. I said, what happened? He said, came around a corner and a Great Dane ran out and I hit it square in the middle, flipped me off the motorbike and broke my arm. This is, this is a sort of, but he confessed this over himself every time you talk to him. Oh, mate, that's how it's going for me. Everything's falling apart. He was so negative in everything he said. What he confessed is what he lived out in his life. We've got to be careful what we say. We hear people say this, things like this, and sometimes even Christians. You know, every time it comes around flu season, well, I'm the first one to get it. Ever heard anybody say something like that? Oh, I'm just starting to feel better, but no, my luck. I'll probably catch something else now. Oh, that bloke at work, he's sick, so probably a whole of us are going to get it. Hello? I had a guy showing him he's, once, he said, it's no good, no good me going out shooting. He said, I probably won't get anything. And I'm thinking, well, it's probably because you're a bad shot, but confessing it won't help. Come on. It's no good me going, getting my license. I probably won't pass. I, I don't know why I even applied for that job. I probably won't even get it. Are you going to walk into an interview very confident if that's your attitude? Come on. What are we confessing? Because what we confess has an effect on our lives, not just us. But you know what we see today? Children are facing battles like they never, ever did before. Anxiety, fears, depression, suicide rates are through the roof, all these sorts of things. You know what, parents? Our children look to us for stability and assurance. And if all we're speaking is fear, doubt, conspiracy theories, they have nothing but anxiety to anchor their lives on. We've got to be so careful of what we speak out around our children because what we speak out will be what they live. Come on. We need to be speaking forth in faith. We need to be speaking forth positively. Christian people should be speaking different. Romans 10.8 says, but what does it say? It's a question. 
The word is near you. It is in your mouth and in your heart. That is the word of faith we are proclaiming. We should be people who are speaking faith. Come on. We should be speaking the word of God. We need to be getting the word of God into our lives so we can speak forth the promises of God. Amen? Come on. If there's one thing, there's a hope in this word. There's promises in this word. There's healing through this word. There's deliverance. There is peace. All the things that the world is looking for today is found in the words of Jesus Christ today. And that's what we should be confessing. We should be speaking out in faith, not looking at the situation and speaking that into being, but speak out the faith in faith what the word of God would say. 2 Corinthians 5, 7, we live by faith and not by sight. You and I are not to go with why, what see, we're seeing on the news, what's happening around our community. Come on, there's going to be things that are happening in this next season. There's going to be COVID cases. There already are many of them around at the moment. You can focus on them or you can focus on God's word. You can say, well, I'll probably catch COVID and die. You can say that if you want. I wouldn't if I was you. I'd be believing that God's put a hedge of protection around me and believing for healing, divine health. Come on. That's what I'm believing for. What do you want to confess today? You talk to some Christians and they'll say, well, you say, how are you going today? Well, under the circumstances, not too bad. Come on. I had a couple of old ladies turn up to Halls Creek for a convention once and, mate, I, I don't know. They glorified the devil more than they glorified God. I said, how was your trip? Oh, it was terrible. We had two flat tyres and this devil really gave us a hammering. I don't know if devil really gives you flat tyres or just driving off the edge of the road on stones does that. But everything they talked about was the devil was giving them hard. The devil was doing this. Devil. I didn't hear Christ come out of their mouth or words of faith once. I'm thinking, why are you having such negative outcomes in your life is because negativity is flowing from you. Come on. We're not supposed to be under the circumstances. We're supposed to rule over our circumstances. See the story of the disciples in the boat. Remember that? Mark 4.35. I'm not going to read it all out. But we know that there's the story where the disciples were crossing the lake and the waves came up and they were freaking out. Furious squall came up and the waves broke over the boat and they were nearly swamped. But Jesus was in the stern sleeping on a cushion. <laughs> disciples woke him up and said, Teacher, don't you care if we drown? He got up and he rebuked the winds and said to the waves, quite, be still. Then the winds died down and were completely calm. He said to the disciples, why are you so afraid? Do you still have no faith? You know what? We're not supposed to be under the circumstances. We're supposed to rule over the circumstances in our life. All authority on heaven and earth has been given to Jesus. And he says, go in the name of Jesus. Come on. We have got power over those situations we shouldn't be under the circumstances we should be controlling the circumstances amen through Christ Jesus we give those things over to him we speak in those things I remember we had a men's meeting once up there and we had it outside the church and we had about 40 men out there and but right across the road was this house and we we're just trying to have a time of prayer and there was a big fight going on in that house there was screaming and people punching each other all this stuff going on and we were trying to pray and the guys were getting distracted and all that, thinking, well, what's going on over there? And, you know, it was pretty normal for Halls Creek at that time. And anyway, um, one of the guys said, well, why don't we just speak over that right now? I said, well, go for it. So he stood there and put, let's put our hands towards that house. So we put our hands towards that house. He said, in the name of Jesus, I just speak peace and calm over that place. In Jesus' name, he went like that and finished. We stopped and went, it was dead quiet. Isn't it amazing when you get shocked by God actually entering your prayer? When you're amazed, you go, it happened. Straight away. It went from like 11 out of 10 to next minute, dead quiet over there. 
And that we, we can then pray and focus on God. But it was just amazing. Didn't let that situation have control, but let's pray over that situation and it brought peace into that situation. Come on. I believe God was trying to show us something at that time that we can speak into those situations. Matthew 17, 20 says, I tell you the truth, you have faith as small as a mustard seed. You can say, speak it out to the mountain, move from here to here and it will move for nothing is impossible for you. There's no impossible situation out there that you can't speak into. Hello? There is no situation too big that if you were to speak, it's going to bring about change. He said, if you tell that mountain to move, it will move. Hallelujah. You might have a few mountains in your life right at the moment. Could be employment, could be a whole heap of different things. But I want to tell you, don't just go with it, speak to it. Amen. We're not supposed to go with the flow. We're supposed to speak to it. Speak into that situation. Just say the word. Speak the word. I want to finish this morning by looking back at this centurion. A man of great faith. There was something that caused him to have this great faith. Matthew 8, 5. When Jesus, and go back through this. When Jesus entered Capernaum, a centurion came to him asking him for help. Lord, he said, my servant lies at home paralyzed and in terrible suffering. Jesus said to him, I will go and heal him. The centurion replied, Lord, I do not deserve to have you come under my roof, but just say the word and my servant will be healed. For I myself am a man under authority with soldiers under me. I tell this one, go, and he goes, and I tell that one, come, and he comes, and I say to my servant, do this, and he does it. See, Capernaum was a little fishing village. It was a small place. The apostle Peter lived there. And this centur- was a centurion was a Roman officer. So he wasn't a Jew. He was a Gentile. And that's why he said, I don't deserve for you to come under my roof. For you're a Jew and I'm a Gentile. And I know for you, the Jews can't come into the house of a Gentile. Isn't that amazing that Jesus didn't care about that? He knew he was a Gentile. He was a Roman guard. It wasn't, it wasn't like he was hiding it at all. And Jesus, right at the start, said, I'll come to your home. That's what he said straight away. He said, I will go and heal him. So he said, I'll come to your home. I don't care about all this stuff. I'm not just here for the Jews. I'm here for the Gentiles as well. But this man, out of honor for him, said, I don't deserve to have you come underneath my roof. But his servant was at home, paralyzed and suffering terribly. You know what I noticed in this story? When this man came to Jesus, he didn't say, nothing's wrong. Sometimes fear stops us from telling the truth. Hello? I'll explain what I say. Somebody comes to you and they say to you, how are you going? You've got a a migraine headache. You don't want to confess that, a fear that you'll get it, but the reality is you've already got it. So if you say, oh, well, nothing's wrong. Well, how can two agree with you in prayer and see a result if you deny that it's even there? See, when he asked the man, what, what, do, we, what do you want me to do for you? He said, hey, my, my servant is at home and he's paralyzed. He didn't say, there's nothing wrong. There's nothing wrong with talking about what's going on right now. You say, I've got a migraine headache, but I'm just going to speak the word into that, and I know my God can heal it. Come on, because you're still speaking in faith. You don't need to be fearful that if you say something, you're going to get it. That's not what it's saying here. It's saying if you've got something going on, you need to have other people around you praying into that situation. I've got a great friend and who was very, very sick, but would not speak it out and wouldn't even acknowledge it was there, so nobody could pray with them. She passed away, which was very, very sad because there could have been other people that could have been praying with her and believing with her because she was so scared to speak it out, but it was already there. 
All she needed to do was say, hey, this is what it is, but let's speak the word of God into this. Let's just say the word that I am healed in Jesus' name, that I am delivered in Jesus' name, that I am set free in Jesus' Come on. We need to be speaking the word. There was not fear there. If two agree in any one thing, in my name it shall be done. Just say the word. See, the centurion was such an incredible man of faith. Jesus went on to say, I've not seen faith like this anywhere else. But do you know why he knew that Jesus could just speak? Because he said this, For my, I myself are a man under authority with soldiers under me. I tell this one to go, and he goes. And that one, come, and he comes. And I say to my servant, do this, and he does it. He was talking about Jesus. He said, I'm a man under authority. I'm under Caesar's authority. If he stands there and says, in the name of Caesar, stop. That person was speaking on behalf of Caesar. He had the power of Caesar behind him. If that person didn't do what he told him to do, the consequences would have been the same as if Caesar would have told him to do that. He had authority and power. And he knew that Jesus was a man under the authority of God. He was sent by God under the authority of God. He spoke forth the word of God. And when he spoke, it was as if God was speaking those words. You know what the Bible says? When you speak words, speak as if it's the very voice of God speaking those words. Because you're speaking them not in your own name. It's like a police officer standing in front of a road train. He's got that uniform on. He's got the badge on. There's a triple road train coming up. He can walk out in the front of that, put his hand up and go, stop. Why can he do that? Because he comes with the authority of the government there that he can pull that road train up. I don't suggest you do it without a uniform on. You might look like some of those kangaroos out there. No authority. Come on. He knew that that authority was there. He knew Jesus was a man under authority. He goes on to say, when Jesus heard this, he was astonished and said to those following him, I tell you the truth, I have, found, I have not found anyone in Israel with such great faith. Say to you, this many will come from the east and the west and will take their place at the feast with Abraham, Isaac and Jacob in the kingdom of heaven. Then Jesus said to the centurion, go, it will be done as you have believed it would. And his servant was healed that very hour. He's saying there's going to be people that are coming from the east and the west, talking about the Gentiles, that are going to be people of great faith, that are going to bring about great changes. You know who he's talking about? You and I. That if we speak the word of God under the authority of Jesus Christ, we can bring about change in our situation, circumstances, and even in our city. Because we've got power. He had faith in the words of Jesus. He just said, just speak the word. Just say the word and it'll be done. He had full confidence that Jesus had the authority of God, that he was God, and as he spoke, it would happen. John 4.49, finishing with this. It's a story of another royal official. So the royal official said, sir, come down. My child dies. Jesus replied, you may go, your son will live. What a contradiction. Man comes to Jesus, says, my son is dying. Can you help him? He just said, go, your son will live. Listen to this. The man took Jesus as he were, at his word and he departed. While he was on his way, still his servant met him with the news that the boy was living when he inquired of the time when his son got better, he said to him, the fever left him yesterday at the seventh hour. Then the father realized that was the exact time at which Jesus had said to him, your son will live. So he and all his household believed. That's powerful. The man took Jesus at his word. You know what? We just need to trust Jesus and his word then we will see the power of the word in action.
Anybody ever seen answered prayer? Anybody? Anybody had an answer to prayer? Come on. Well, you know what? That's the word of God in action. You prayed for something and asked in Jesus' name, and God answered that prayer. You know what? You just got to take Jesus at his word. Just speak the word. Just say the word. Speak the word into situations. There is power in the mighty name of Jesus. We we sang it this morning. There is power in the mighty name of Jesus. Every demonic force, every principality power has to submit to the name of Jesus. John 14, 12 says, I tell you the truth, anyone who has faith in me will do what I've been doing. He will do even greater things than these because I'm going to the Father. Isn't that amazing? We look at Jesus and go, it says, I couldn't even write the books with the amount of things that he, he did. And yet he goes on, Jesus says, you'll do greater things than I will, than I've done. And I will do whatever you ask in my name so that the Son may bring glory to the Father. You may ask me for anything in my name and I will do it. I want to say there's authority in the name of Jesus today. Amen. When you're speaking out there, you're not just speaking on your behalf. You're speaking under the authority of Christ. Hallelujah. You ask it in Jesus' name. You pray to the Father and you ask in Jesus' name. The words we speak are powerful to bring about change. We have authority in the name of Jesus today to bring changes into situations and circumstances. Summary. Life and death are in the power of the tongue, blessings and cursings. What we say affects the lives of others. Make sure we only speak blessing over others and living water flows from us. What we speak today will be what we live tomorrow. We have the power to speak things into being good and bad. We should be people who speak faith in God's word. And our words are powerful because we speak under the authority of Christ. And if we ask anything in his name, it shall be done. Isn't that exciting? Hallelujah. Don't ask anything in my name. Ask it in his name or your name. Because if you ask it in his name, it shall be done. I just want to pray this morning. If there's somebody here and you don't know Jesus... It's just a matter of confessing that with your mouth. That Jesus Christ is Lord. I'm just going to pray a prayer. Then I also want to pray that if you're here and you've had words spoken over you, I want to pray that those power of those words would be broken from you today. Amen? That the words of negativity that have been spoken over your life would not have an influence on you from this day forward. Hallelujah. Mighty God, we just come before you today. We thank you for this beautiful day you've given us today. And God, we just pray that you would just have your hand upon us today. God, I just pray for people here. If there's people here that don't know you as their Lord and Savior, or maybe they knew you, but they've wandered away. But God, today, as they believe in their heart and they confess with their mouth again, God, your word says, if they speak it, they shall be saved. So, God, I just pray for those people today, Lord God. Give them the courage to stand, take a hold of your word, and confess it in Jesus' name. Mighty God, I just pray for each and every one of us here today. Lord, we've all had words of negativity spoken over us. It might be from parents, it might be from friends, it might be from teachers, from all other people. But, God, we pray that you would just break those power, the power of those negative words off us in Jesus' name. God, we not let those negative words have influence over our life, over our future, over our destiny. But God, today, that the only word that would lead and guide us and direct us would be your word today. And what you think of us. So God, we just break the power of those negative words off our lives. And we speak life and blessing and life to the full over each and every person here today. God, I just pray as we go from this place that those streams of living water flow through us, that we would be people that would speak the word of God. We would speak life and blessing in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.
God bless you this morning. Hallelujah. Have a great Sunday.